gentlemen, do you have an uncle? Good. And did he always tell you things that his dad told his dad about bodily health? Good. Because it's not accurate enough, but you know what is? Hims, the service that have sponsored today's video, so thanks very much, and go in the description below to check it out. Because what do they do? Well, it's an online service all about helping men deal with embarrassing body issues. By talking with real doctors through Hims, you can get medical grade solutions professionally recommended to you in prescription and non-prescription based medication for issues anywhere from your head to your opposite head. See what I mean? Even I'm not that good at doing it. I get it. It's not that easy to talk about embarrassing issues in person. That's completely normal. But it's also silly not to do something about it. But with HIMS, you can get the same science-based and effective treatments. Go to the description below right now at 4hims.com forward slash and get started with a visit to a virtual doctor and I can offer you guys a month's trial of the comprehensive hair kit for just five dollars. That's it. So thanks again to HIMS for sponsoring. Please check them out in the description below and you can trust me with pharmaceutical stuff. I am trustworthy. I'm completely trustworthy. Hello, my duckies. So I bet you're all wondering right now, what the fucking wobbly willy is going on right now? Well, I'll tell you what. Look at the title of this video and you'll see. This is the second part of a two-parter episode. And before you all shit the bed, yes, I do know I said I was going to get this done last week, and I'm really sorry I didn't, but here's the thing. I got home from an amazing trip out to EGLX in Canada the weekend after that first part of the video went out. Hey, Canada! But despite an amazing time of meeting a shit ton of you amazing people, no matter what I did, I couldn't be protected by an attack of jet lag combined with getting sick, so I physically could not get the video done in time even if I tried. Either way, I'm okay now, and I'm back. <laughs> and in, ca in case you missed it, here is what happened in the last part of this two-parter. Of the last video. All together now we, we faked a shirt, a lamb went green, we shot a bird, we smoked a joint, a doctor drowned a big screen, we really went before a pussy, a cat got stuck, we sniffed his ass, we ate some tips, we starved a kid, he yanked his pants, a baby shat, and a lady couldn't find a shoe that was right there. Idiot. If it's Phoebe's birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Oh, it is Phoebe's birthday! That's when I decided to film this on Phoebe's birthday. Happy birthday, Phoebes. So we just figured out the riddle of the man going to St. Ives, so what could possibly be next? Um... Oh... This isn't very nice. I I've already been to one dark place, I don't need to go to any others. Jack ah! Okay, yeah, when I was younger, this painting was, well... Rather horrifying. This could very easily be the cover of a physical release of fucking PT. But why is it in pitch blackness? Why is he leaping over a flame? Why is he wearing blood red tights? Why does he look like he just slit someone's throat from behind an alley and made a devilish escape? <laughs> this picture raises far too many questions and I hate it. So on to Lucy Lockett, the nursery rhyme that is seriously honest to God about prostitution in the 18th century. And then we move on to... Bloody fucking bum bags! Another interval! We... We just started! Darren, I'm holding you personally accountable for this! I know you didn't edit this, Stilly, but look at you, it's definitely your fault. The next song is Peas Porridge Hot, Peas Porridge Cold. You know, a big group of people sitting around waiting for a stew of split peas to sit around for nine days before they eat it. Sounds good to me. I don't remember the last time I had so much fun at a ritualistic mass suicide. And then we move on to A Cat Came A Fiddling. I don't know this rhyme myself, and I must be honest, that cat is definitely fiddling with something, but I don't want to know what. And then we pan over to one of my favourite creatures on planet Earth, a bee. A bee? Bee! Bees, it's a bee. So yes, this rhyme gets a big old check mark from me. The big old tick. A for a big tick. But hey, the mouse is supposed to be marrying the bee. How do you think that wedding night will go? Go over here, love. I'm ready for you. Are you kidding? Your stinger made me very sore last time. I'll take it over here. The next track is Handy Spandy Jack a Dandy, the kid who loves plum cake and sugar candy. And I know he looks like he stole them from the shop, but don't worry. The rhyme says that he didn't. It's not classed as stealing when the owner of the shop is dead, is it? Also, I'm immediately in love with the backing music and have nothing else to say. 
I must also give another pay rise to the sick bastard that decided to put a cat came a fiddling right before Handy Spandy. What are you trying to say here? That a cat came a fiddling Handy Spandy Jack a Dandy? What a fucking creeper. Next up is not rock a bye baby, but hush a bye baby. That's why that last rhyme wasn't correct. And even though you never see the baby fall out of the tree, I find it very dark and a little bit sad that the poor little thing is so happy to be in the tree, not even realizing that in a few minutes it'll come crashing down to the ground and die. They say ignorance is bliss, but I'm not sure that applies here. Next track. Ooh, out of proportion old woman half the size of her house that definitely didn't miss arm day. What looks like an old man's welly boot stuck out of the chimney. This must be the hot cross buns artist again, and you know you're in for a fun time when the start of the music sounds like the start of the theme for Psycho Mantis in fucking Metal Gear Solid. There was an old woman, lived under a hill, and if she's not gone, she lives there still. What is it with this tape and strangely ominous rhymes? Why does he say that in such a creepy way? Why is this music making me feel like that woman is watching me from my back garden window? More to the point, isn't this rhyme kind of obvious in the first place? If she's not gone, she lives there still. I mean, isn't that kind of fucking redundant? You might as well change the rhyme to There was an old woman lived under a hill and if she still lives there, then she still lives there. It's complete fucking trash. And this is followed by Goosey Goosey Gander. I'd say something about the rhyme, but I already did in my first ever nursery rhyme video. It's a pretty frightening story of a goose that comes to your house and murders you if you don't pray to our Lord and Saviour. He died for all our sins, you know, that. So yeah, no big deal really. On to the next one. Okay, not quite yet. Another interval later, and we end up on If All The World Were Paper. What a great paper that would be. I like this rhyme for as stupid as it is, but let's be real. The best thing about this rhyme is the guy having a field day on the keyboard. If all the world were paper, and all the sea were ink, if all the trees were bread and cheese, what should we have to drink? Plus, if all the world were paper and the sea were ink, it would all sink. The end. Little Miss Muffet is next, and do you think we get an awesomely adorable puppet spider jiggling along to the song? What are you, a floppy old dick? Of course we don't get that. Instead, the spider just appears, and Miss Muffet just disappears. Great. Okay, then what's going on in this innocent scene here? Where are you going to, my pretty maid? I'm going and milking, sir, she said. Okay, all right, a little bit presumptuous, a bit forward, I suppose, but we've just started. Let's see where this goes, and there's no rhyming yet, but again, we've just started. Let's give it a chance to kick off. May I go with you, my pretty maid? You're kindly welcome, sir, she said. Okay, well, I mean, he did ask, and she did say yes, so there's nothing quite that wrong yet. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes, if you please, kind sir. And you said yes! What is your father? He doesn't even know who your dad is! Why are you being so cool about this weird... Weird man! What is your fortune? Look, he's trying to get into your money already! My face is my fortune, sir, she said. Then I can't marry you, my pretty maid. And now she tells him she has no money and he backs out! Nobody asked you, sir, she said. And she's okay with that! I'm just gonna let that speak for itself. I don't know when that piece of shit was written or why it was classified as a nursery rhyme when every sentence ends with my pretty maid and she said, but you know, either way, I'm extremely uncomfortable and I hate it. Mary Mary, quite contrary, is at least a little bit more normal. Big shame about filming the edge of the paper there, though. I've been taken right out of the immersion now. I thought I was in real life. Yay, tongue twisters, I love- Ow. Yay, tongue twisters, I love these. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, where's the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? I think the real question we need to ask, though, is if Peter Piper had two eyebrows on each eye and elf ears, why isn't he living in the forest? I must also bring your attention to his much bigger and more muscly right arm. Hmm, I think Peter Piper pulled his pickled pepper a bit too much. The Grand Old Duke of York is next, but aside from the climbing of the hill going from this in the original nursery rhyme VHS to, well, that, it's also worth saying that his 10,000 men are already at the top and the bottom of the hill because the proportions are so fucked, so you can't make it look like they're halfway up and so either up nor down because they are up and are down. The only way this crappy VHS can make it look like the men are climbing up and down the hill is by making them walk right off towards the captain's feet. Another interval later! And we see that the next load of rhymes sounds suspiciously like the scene selections of a porno DVD. And we end up at Old Mother Hubbard, one of my favourite bits of the original VHS I looked at because of the creatively hilarious dog marionette just going nuts the whole time. 
time, and of course the awesome music, but here we just get Darren, bloody fucking Darren, sounding as bored as always and just reading off one verse after the other while the same three second keyboard loop plays, and honestly, I just feel sorry for the artist who drew all of these paintings because he or she had to paint like ten of them all in a row, but they stay on screen for like two to three seconds each, and Darren doesn't seem to sound like he gives a fuck reading the rhyme out that the pictures were featured in the first place. I'd be pissed about that. Yeah, like this lady. Come, let's to bed. Says Sleepyhead. Yep, I know how she feels right now. What's more interesting to me though is that on the back of the box for the DVD specifically, this is the only rhyme featured with a weird punctuation error. Come, let's to bed. And I was so angry about this when I saw it that I decided to have a look for more information about classic nursery rhymes with Darren Day on Google so that I could complain to the company, only to then be given some results may have been removed under data protection law in Europe. Because I guess there was some kind of Watergate conspiracy behind the creation of this DVD, and I think the upside down wrong coloured Olympic rings are actually the symbols representing Darren Day's sex cult. So we move on to Punch and Judy. I don't really get the appeal of laughing at an old woman being domestically abused by her husband with a big bat. And then we move on to Seesaw Marjorie Daw. Now I must give props to the guys making this stilly because there is actual animation here, but last time I checked, this isn't how seesaws worked. This VHS seems to think they work more like this. Ooh. Ah! Oh! I like that. Me too. I don't think I should be asking what's going on in this picture. Hmm. Hmm. dub dub. Oh wait, don't go on just yet, Darren. I know this one. I'll join in with you. <coughs> Rubber dub dub. Three men in a tub. And how do you think they got there? That's not it. What? They all jumped out of a rotten potato. It was enough to make a man stare. This next rhyme pretty much gets all of it right. One, two, buckle my shoe. I've already talked about this one in depth in my last nursery rhyme video, and this one isn't too bad, to be fair. And then we go on to... What? You know what? No, what? You know what? Oh, fuck. Oh, damn. Yes, another interval, because you can never have enough mid-movie snacks and probably need the toilet every five minutes from the coke you're drinking. And then we're on to the Queen of Hearts, not mentioned in the last video, to be fair, but it's not that interesting. And then we get two little dicky birds with Peter and Paul, which I call bullshit on for a few reasons. Firstly, here's the rhyme. Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall, one named Peter, one named Paul. Fly away, Peter, fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter, come back, Paul. So yeah, there's only one rhyme in here, wall and Paul. And the other rhyme is Paul and Paul. Lazy. Secondly, watch how the birds in this fly away. You can still see the outlines of them. They haven't gone anywhere. They've just gone slightly translucent. The cock crows in the morn. Don't give a flying fuck. And I think the technical term is morning wood. So the next song is one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Nothing really wrong here either. In fact, it's probably better than the other VHS because the kid has five fingers instead of six. Next up is three young rats in hats and all these other animals that went out for a walk but then went home because it rained. I don't mind this rhyme actually, it's silly and charming enough to be memorable and Darren's narration works perfectly with the absurdity a little bit. Shit, I'm being positive, let's bring it back! Well, I wish I could but this hasn't got much more going on with it. It's fine. And then we have one more interval and luckily it's the last one! <laughs> I saw Three Ships Are Sailing is next. I know the melody to this one, but never really heard the lyrics. How does it go? And what do you think was in the men on New Year's Day in the morning? Three pretty girls were in the men. Oh. oh god, little boy blue. This is one of the more boring parts of the original VHS for sure, but that is a fucking Michael Bay movie compared to the static, unanimated feature of this here. Plus it's seriously lacking in a Darren Day who should be fake leaning on the painted fence waiting for the cow to steal his watch. Wait a second. Darren? Why are you hanging around in a field with a sleeping young boy? Don't you look at me like that! Even so, it's still such a boring rhyme presented in such a boring way, so I can't say anything more than... Will you wake him? No. Not I. Or if I do, then I will die. And then this is followed up by the Old MacDonald had a farm of this tape. London Bridge is falling down. Yes, there's no Old MacDonald on this, so automatically it gets a point over the other VHS, but that still doesn't mean that Darren Day's adaptation of London Bridge is any better in comparison. Do we get the awesomely creative House of Cards set up or anything? No. We get boring static fading images. Whatever, I'm used to it by now. But what I'm not used to is how this just keeps going on and on 
add on for two and a half minutes. It's the longest part of the entire stilly. The melody and chords just repeat over themselves every 10 seconds or so, and every time you think it's going to end, it just keeps on going. They go through the traditional list of things that they rebuild the bridge with at first, you know, wood and clay, bricks and mortar, iron and steel, and instead of ending there with stone so strong after all of them, we get more pointless fluff added to it. Build it up with silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold, build it up with silver and gold, my fair lady. Great, thank you for extending the rhyme longer than it ever needed to be. I think I'm just about done here, so on to the next rhyme. Silver and gold will be stolen away, stolen away, stolen away, silver and gold will be stolen away, my fair lady. Okay, are we stopping now? Good. So on to the next rock. Set to man to watch all night, watch all night, watch all night. Set to man to watch all night, my fair lady. God! Okay. You've found something that fixes the bridge. You've got someone to watch it all night in case someone steals it. There's nothing else you can add, is there? No? Are we good to go? Fantastic. So on to the next ride. Suppose Thank God we're nearly at the end. The north wind doth blow. A slightly sombre song to close off this kind of video, like the last one actually. And then we move on to the grand finale. Jack and Jill. Yeah. Jack and Jill. Nothing sad, epic, timeless, just plain old regular happy bouncy Jack and Jill. It's kind of like ending your classic Nursery Rhymes collection video with Humpty Dumpty or Handy Spandex Jack and Dandex. You, you can't do that. Well, me and my friend Daisy, we enjoyed singing them. The cow never fucking sang. If you'd like to see them all again, just rewind the tape. Ha! The joke's on you, Darren, because this isn't a tape, it's a DVD. Bye bye for now. And in the most anticlimactic way imaginable, that's how the short film ends. Right there. No fanfare, no encore, no excitement. It just unceremoniously stops. And as you can probably tell, as far as nursery rhyme VHS tapes go, I don't like this one too much. It's really fun to watch back nowadays to see how boring it is and laugh at some of the more absurd moments. And Darren Day is always good for a laugh. But the main issue with it is that there is nowhere near the level of timelessness, charm, and character that the other, older, less budgeted one has. There's just nothing really to say about this one. It's shorter than the other one too but just feels way longer. And don't get me wrong, I did watch this one countless times as a kid as well as the other one, but you know, very young kids are mostly okay with anything, and to be honest, I don't think this collection is very good or memorable, but it's harmless. It's not going to destroy your kids or leave them creatively bankrupt, it just exists. And that's okay, I guess. But not okay enough for the Kadekura show. So Classic Nursery Rhymes featuring Darren Day gets the slaughter today. <laughs> And if it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, Phoebe! And please remember to stay beautiful. And now I am done with nursery rhymes for a good long while now, so thank fucking Christ for that. I was starting to get sick of all this shit. But I'm not. <laughs> Hey everybody and thanks so much for watching the concluding part of this other Nursery Rhyme VHS video. I'm so sorry it was a little bit late. I'm sure you can imagine that jet lag and getting sick from the con is not a very good mix. But special thanks to every single person on the screen that stuck with me through this little bit of a delay. And special thanks to the top tier supporters that you can find out how to get yourself if you look in the description below. But no one's holding a gun to your head, it's totally optional. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Andy Herrera, Exopaz, Kyle way, Thomas Olsen, Mills Kahai, Alicia Knightley, Super Spyro Fan 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B., QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.